Come, joy, and lighten our spirits. Come, hope, lift us from despair. Come, peace, ease our frantic worry. Come, love, shine in all we do. Come, Jesus, be born in us. Come, Lord, set us free, rule in our hearts, and teach us to sing with joy. Be present with your church, Lord, as we respond to your call. Open our eyes, fill us with compassion, lead us and give us courage. You have revealed yourself as one who wishes to bring about justice and true peace among people. Help us in these days to proclaim the time of your blessing. Amen. As for you, Bethlehem of Ephrathah, Though you are the least significant of Judah's forces, one who is to be a ruler in Israel on my behalf will come out from you. His origin is from remote times, from ancient days. Therefore, he will give them up until the time when she who is in labor gives birth. The rest of his kin will return to the people of Israel. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. They will dwell secure, because he will surely become great throughout the earth. He will become one of peace. When Assyria invades our land and treads down our fortresses, then we will raise up against him seven shepherds and eight human princes. Mary said, With all my heart I glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am I rejoice in God my Savior. He has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on everyone will consider me highly favored because the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He shows mercy to everyone from one generation to the next who honors him as God. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty handed. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy, just as he promised to our ancestors, to Abraham and to Abraham's, de Abraham's descendants forever.
Our theme this Advent, come home for Christmas, finally has gotten to that moment when we feel like we're pretty close to home, wherever that is. Home for the holidays in a very real sense, since it's only a week away. So, ready or not, it's time. And home, in that familiar time, familiar place sense, especially with the scriptures for this week. We are in Christmas story territory. The last couple of weeks have been a sort of get ready in general theme with John the Baptist, which is a story that takes place 30 years after the events of the Christmas story, telling the people to get ready for the Messiah, who is all grown up at that point. And that's definitely a get ready story, but it's not the Christmas story, not the get ready for the birth of Jesus story. Well, we have that today. This is the story that we've learned and told and retold that's been sentimentalized and disnified, as one commentator says, the subject of hymns and poems, paintings, plays, and an uncountable number of Christmas cards. And we are invited, as we hear it again, to stand in awe of this story, to be blessed by it, the blessing of wonder that picks you up and sets you on your feet and gives you a new spirit for living, and not just a last minute jolt of energy to shop, to wrap up your shopping and your wrapping. <laughs> this story, these scriptures, are our home, in a way. Such familiar verses, comforting to hear again at the right time of year. But have we listened to them? Micah is a familiar voice this time of year. He's right there in the middle of the category of books in the Old Testament known as the Minor Prophets. And Micah would probably be the first to point out that that doesn't mean they're not as good as the major prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah. It's just that their books are shorter. And it's not that they have less to say. They just get right to the point. So all of these prophets are Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. And if you've read all of those books, you know that Micah is hanging out right there in the middle of them and surrounded by some interesting characters, wild times in these books, crazy prophecies. And Micah deserves a lot of credit for a lot of reasons. One, he holds a key piece of the Christmas story when he says, as for you, Bethlehem of Ephrathah, that's a famous one. But he also says other things that aren't in this passage, like spears into pruning hooks, and nation shall not lift up sword against nation, and neither shall they learn war anymore. That's not from Isaiah. Well, it is in Isaiah, but it was in Micah first. And Micah probably wishes things like copyright and plagiarism had been invented back in Old Testament times since he wrote it down first. But if your minor prophet Micah, everyone just pays attention when that fancy schmancy major prophet says it. But back to the Bethlehem part. It's interesting that in the carol, O Little Town Of, it cuts the name of the place short. It's Bethlehem Ephrathah or Bethlehem of Ephrathah. Either way, that's the whole name of the place. And the Ephrathah part is its older name, which goes back to Genesis and the story of Jacob and that family. And it's the place where Rachel, the matriarch of all Israel, is buried. Another thing about Bethlehem is, as you may know, that the the name itself means house of bread. A little house of bread we could be singing, but we're not. And strangely, it can also be translated as house of war. Hebrew is interesting the way you can translate it different things depending on where the dots are that make the vowels in the Hebrew writing. And that's not as quaint and homey, but it was a house of war when King David was made king there and it was his headquarters for military operations in the ninth century before Jesus was born. Back in Jesus' time and Micah's time, it wasn't much of a town. It's kind of touristy now, kind of the same way Micah is just a minor prophet. And that says something. It's not the place of a great palace. 
It's not the place where you would expect a mighty savior to be born. And it's not a place that a royal family would be connected to, at least not one that lives any kind of lavish lifestyle. Yes, Joseph was a descendant of King David, but there's 14 generations between them, and that means David would actually have thousands and thousands of descendants, most of whom would not live in any kind of palaces. They would live someplace a little more normal. So it's a humble thing. It's a humble home. And I think it makes the whole story a little bit more endearing, I think. Instead of it being a fairy tale that involves a prince or a princess, it's a baby born to nobody in particular, at least nobody famous. A teenage girl who apparently was told by an angel who appeared in her living room that she would give birth to God and that that baby would be the long-awaited Messiah mentioned by Micah and his whole gang of minor prophets and the major prophets and all the rabbis and scholars of all the generations, 77 generations between David and Jesus. Now, that is something to celebrate. And that's what Mary is talking about today, that she is so glad to be a part of God's plan. Sometimes, traditionally, Mary's words get described as a song, and it certainly has been turned into music and song through the century. But notice that she never says, Woohoo! Look at me! I'm pretty special, it turns out. Everything she says is about God's work, that God will bring mercy and strength and justice and promises fulfilled. It's a blessing and a hope and a promise all wrapped up together. And it's also a threat to the status quo. And that's fine because the status quo wasn't working out so well anyway, not for people and certainly not in God's opinion. God changing the world forever begins in an unlikely place with unlikely participants and That's kind of the ultimate home of our faith. It's a core truth of our faith, for sure, that God can use anything and anyone to bring about God's plan for the world. Anyone can bring God's grace into this flesh and blood world, into this house of bread. That is our home for faith. And sometimes, It lives in fancy cathedrals, decked with sculptures and paintings and stained glass and gold. But most of the time, its home is more ordinary. It's in the preaching of a minor prophet, a teenage girl, a backwater town, a family in the UP, a person no one pays much attention to. Isn't it amazing that God works this way? And that is its own blessing to realize that. The blessing of home is the reminder that the gift of Christmas is ours and the world's both. The gift of Christmas is our home in faith. Find a way to remind everyone of that blessing today. Be in awe and wonder and full of excitement, friends. It's almost here now.
If you're joining us for in-person worship on Christmas Eve, we'll be gathering at the Connection Center and our Scandia campus at 5 p.m. At 7.30 p.m., we'll be worshiping at the Nagani Mitchell campus and First Campus. For Christmas Day, join us for Pod Church beginning at 8 a.m. We're gathering together online, virtually, with leaders and musicians from all around the Michigan Conference. We hope you're enjoying Pod Church. Please take a moment to subscribe to our channel and be notified each time there's a new video. Be sure to check out our Facebook page for up-to-date information as well as our weekly newsletter. Feel free to say hello on Facebook Messenger or use our email address and let us know how you're enjoying Pod Church. As you go into the week ahead, find yourself on a journey home. Pod Church is the weekly online worship of Marquette Hope a United Methodist faith community located in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Find us at facebook.com slash mqthope, mqthope.com, and on YouTube.